I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Jack Sparrow is Pirates of the Caribbean. There I said it. And a lot of you are probably going to be mad, while a lot of you will just go ahead and agree with me. If you don't know, right now, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 6, a lot of leaks have come out about how they're replacing Jack Sparrow with Anne Bonny, or it's going to be based off of Anne Bonny, with Ayo Inbri. Inibri? I don't know how to say her last name. We'll be replacing Jack Sparrow. But the problem is, is that there's a reason why I started off this video by going ahead and saying Jack Sparrow is Pirates of the Caribbean. If we look at the way Jack Sparrow is introduced, we have this pirate that is on the crow's nest looking out into the world. And he looks like a boss. He looks badass. But when he comes down from it, his life's basically a wreck. And it's funny to go ahead and see him come into port, getting off onto the dock, and, you know, paying a couple of shills where a boat is basically not supposed to be there. And then you have him interact with Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. Will Turner being the good boy that wants to serve and, you know, he has a liking for Elizabeth Swan. While Elizabeth Swan is supposed to be this good girl, but is really a tomboy. And she likes the idea of pirates. These three characters, these three characters, are a interesting mix, and their dynamic is very interesting to be around. That's what was the strong selling point for Pirates of the Caribbean when it first came out. Now, of course, with their adventures and how they interacted with characters and how they were, where Jack Sparrow was just this quirky, fun guy, you kind of grew to like the guy. In fact, it was just amusing to watch him. And that's why people watch Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, we've had an entire storyline where we kind of understood that Jack Sparrow is under misunderstood. And a lot of people didn't understand why he was doing the things he did. But in Pirates of the Caribbean 5, Dead Men Tells No Tales, we see that around the end, how these Inquisitors, the Spanish Inquisition, how they became to be. And they basically died at the hands of, you know, Jack Sparrow, uh, a young Jack Sparrow. And before he became captain, he was just avenging, avenging the people that died. So technically, he was a good guy from the start, right? And it was just the beginning to know how he became the Jack Sparrow we were introduced in movie one, right? The entire franchise has had a hard look at Jack Sparrow and made him this lovable character that... You cannot separate from Pirates of the Caribbean. You look up any movie's poster, Jack Sparrow's right there. You look up any time anyone mentions Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow is mentioned or is right there. Even on Twitter right now, with Pirates of the Caribbean 6, you can't find a post that doesn't mention Jack Sparrow in some way. Jack Sparrow is basically Pirates of the Caribbean. You can't make a Pirates of the Caribbean without him. Now let's say you can, and let's say you're going to go ahead and replace it with a new cast with Ayo Ibri's new character as I believe will be Anne Bonny. Here's the problem with that. I wouldn't care too much if you actually concentrated on making a likable character like you did with Jack Sparrow, like you did with Elizabeth Swan, and like you did with Will Turner, and you made really awesome complex relationships with other uh, characters that will come out and so on and so forth instead of focusing on the woke side. And this is where I feel like a lot of people don't understand why there is a cult following for Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't care if the character is going to be lesbian or whatever. I don't care if they're going to be black. I don't care about whatever woke agenda you have to push. I care about a good story. And this is a problem that not only Pirates of the Caribbean is now facing with, but has happened to Star Wars, and has happened to uh, Marvel. Just because of who you are doesn't mean you have to implement it to a story to, or an agenda to push towards an audience. A story is a story. Stick with it, make it enjoyable. You know, let people actually like it. If you shove it down their throats, no one's gonna like it. When I talked about Elizabeth Swan, did I talk about her being straight? Did anyone care about if she was gonna be with Will Turner or not the moment she got on screen? Just because there was a little bit of love interest, it was just like interesting to see, but no one cared. While we're talking about Anne, Anne Bonny here as the source character, we also have to realize that if you're going to put this woke thing in or whatever, 
This is a white Irish woman that depended on a man uh, called Rackham to save her from her husband that she then runs away with. Yeah, she's a pirate, but like, that's the origin, right? And unless you can make this a really interesting story, which I doubt Disney's going to do, Bob Iger has done a terrible job as to the directions of any of these franchises. Yeah, I don't see Pirates of the Caribbean 6 working out too well. And unfortunately speaking, unless Disney can rear its own head from its own ass, I don't think anyone's going to be caring about what Pirates of the Caribbean 6 has to offer. In fact, I would go as far as to say the only time you're ever going to hear people talk about Pirates of the Caribbean anymore from this point forward, they're not going to be talking about Pirates of the Caribbean 6. They'll be talking about 1, 2, 5. And I couldn't blame them for that. With that being said, that's all there is really to it for this entire situation. It's sad to see that another IP is going to be butchered by Disney. I really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. It is what it is. I've made my peace with the fact that it's going to go to shit. But with that being said, if you like what you saw, like, comment, subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. And, and practically, I could give less of a shit about Pirates of the Caribbean 6. See ya.